Hey guys, welcome back to How to Rip's Lesson of the Week. In today's episode, we're gonna focus on what you can do in the gym to develop your paddle power. Now those five seconds when you're paddling into a wave is when you need to produce maximum power. You need maximum speed to get onto the wave. I'm gonna show you exercises that help promote your body's ability to produce power. And guys, if you're new here, subscribe to our channel now where we upload two videos every week to help your surfing progress. So paddling is very much a pulling exercise as we reach and pull the water underneath us, we're using predominantly our back muscles. So today's video focuses on how to build up the strength and power in your back muscles. Now I'm gonna structure the video in such a way that we start with the easiest progressions first and then we progressively get harder. And guys, remember that core strength is integral to every body weight movement and even weightlifting movement that we perform. Without engaging your core correctly and a strong core, you're much more prone to injury. So make sure you check out our core strength video which explains what you can do to engage your core and how to make it stronger. So the first exercise we're gonna have a look at is the ring row. The ring row is a great exercise to begin building up a base of pulling strength. It's also fantastic for anyone that has shoulder issues as it helps you have your shoulder blades back together. To perform this movement, simply get some gymnastic rings and set them up so they're about chest height. From here, you lean back, holding them about shoulder width apart. Keep your feet together and assume a nice hollow body position. At this point, you need to squeeze your shoulder blades back together. From here, you then pull aggressively, bringing your chest to the rings. While you perform the pulling motion, make sure your elbows are in close to the body. Once you have reached that point, you then lower back down slowly and controlled, making sure that the shoulder blades are squeezed back together the entire time. To make this movement easier, you simply stand taller. To make it harder, you get more and more parallel to the ground. And to make it harder from that point, you then get a box and elevate your feet so that you're totally parallel to the floor. So once you've built up your strength and power in performing ring rows and you've started high and now you've worked your way down to a more parallel position to the floor, the next progression is the pull up. Pull ups are the king of any pull up exercise. As you can see here, shoulder width apart is great. But when it comes to grip, as you can see here, I've got an overhand grip versus an underhand grip. Now the reason why I recommend overhand for paddle power is because that engages the same muscles. If you turn over and use a underhand grip, you start to use your bicep and arms a lot more. But for us, we need to focus on our back and lats. So to engage these muscles correctly, an overhand grip is best. To perform a pull up, you must start from a dead hang position and then pull yourself up aggressively so your chin is over the bar and then lowering slowly to a dead hang position to then and repeat the maneuver. Achieving a pull-up is a fantastic goal to have, but where do we start on our journey? Well, we know that we build up a base strength using the rings, but pulling up is different. A ring row is a horizontal pull, and a pull-up is a vertical pull. So we need to develop vertical pulling strength, and the first place to start is with a negative pull-up. To perform a negative pull-up, you simply get a box, stand on that box, and then jump up. By doing this, you eliminate the need to actually pull yourself up, because by jumping from the box, you get your chin over the bar. From here, you hold and then lower slowly. So a negative means focusing on the lowering portion of the movement. So you jump up, chin over the bar, and then lower slowly and controlled all the way to a dead hang. Make sure that you're strong enough to do this though. If you jump and then fall because you don't have the strength to control your lower, then spend more time using the rings and the bands like we're about to see. So while negatives are a great exercise for building up your pulling strength, we also need to work on the actual pull. Instead of just focusing on the lower, we need to still work on the pull. And that's where using something like this 
a resistance band comes in really handy. Resistance bands come in varied thicknesses. The thicker the band, the more assistance it'll give you. So it pays to start with a thick band, and then as you get stronger, get progressively thinner until you don't need a band anymore. To use it, you simply wrap it around like this. From there, you put one foot in, it doesn't matter what foot, and then you wrap your other foot around. Then you get into your dead hang position and simply perform a pull up as you would normally. So now that we understand how to build up basic pulling strength, we understand how to perform a ring row and how we can work towards performing a pull up. But what about for those of us who can already do those things? Well there's a few advanced exercises I'm going to show you now which focus specifically on power production and will translate to that paddle power that we need really well. By being able to produce more power in your paddling, you're going to be able to catch more waves effectively and this leaves more room for the fun stuff. First of these exercises is the chest to bar pull up, but we must do it from a strict dead hang position. No kipping. In doing so, we ensure maximal power production. To perform this maneuver, hands go shoulder width apart as per usual with the pull up, but we're going to focus on pulling harder and faster, and instead of getting just our chin over the bar, we want to get our chest to hit the bar. And if we can get our belly button to bar, that's even better. In the last video I did, I spoke a lot about using the rings to develop power for your pop-up. But the rings can also be a great tool for practicing your pull-up strength because, once again, they're an unbalanced, unstable object that require your muscles to stabilize. So as you progress, it's great to mix up the objects that you actually perform pull-ups on and also varying your grip. In this example here, you can see me using a rope to perform a rope pull-up. You can also use a towel wrapped over a bar to perform a towel pull-up. Both have a similar effect and work slightly different areas of the back. Another advanced maneuver is the muscle-up. The muscle-up involves a strong explosive pull combined with the ring dip. So you get the best of both worlds, pulling strength and pushing strength. Pushing strength we need for the pop-up, pulling strength we need for paddling. Another fantastic advanced variation on the pull-up is a weighted pull-up. You can use a weight belt or you can simply get a dumbbell and wrap it between your feet like this to perform the exercise. Start with a light increase, here you can see 5 kilos, and then perform the pull-up as you usually would, focusing on the explosive pull and the slow lower. This is a fantastic way to develop more power for your paddling. Guys, thanks for watching the video today. I hope that now you understand why we would perform these exercises to help you build up that paddle power that you need to catch waves more effectively. And I hope you understand how to actually perform these movements. If you're unsure of anything, comment below and we'll try and help you out as best as we can. Remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel and comment below to let us know what else you want to see. Guys, if you want to stay up to date with what boards we're riding and the gear that we're using, you can see all of that in the video description below. 
I'll catch you in the surf, guys. I'm out of here. Something like this one. On the way, then looking.